Alright guys, so in this video we're going to talk about uh, the TBIs, uh, you know, more specifically uh, when service members come back from, from uh, combat experience. This is something when you look on the USMLE outline uh, content, it's on actually the second page and it, it says that they're going to focus more on these types of questions. So uh, we want to make sure we stay ahead of the curve on this and you know, that USMLE outline content is for step one, two, and three. But I really think this will apply. We'll try to make the questions apply to step one and uh, step two. So uh, hope hope you like the video. All right, guys. So this question reads: A serviceman who recently returned home from military deployment reports he and his partner are going through marital difficulties. The serviceman mentions persisting headaches since returning from his deployment. The serviceman mentions that he served in a combat zone and had to return fire on several occasions. During this initial encounter, which of the following screen tools would be most appropriate to utilize? So. Anytime you're getting this whole military uh, kind of a serviceman, you got to be thinking, you know, trauma, you know, what happened when he was there. And obviously, he's had these symptoms since returning from the deployment, okay? It's not like they started when he got back. He's had these since, um, well, I should say, since returning, but uh, it sounds like he had them before, you know, before he got off the plane, per se, okay? So, essentially, the learning point here is how do you screen when someone, when you get military people and they come back, What's the screening tool? Now, there's a thing called the combat experiences, okay, uh, scale for deployment, risk, and resilience, oops, resilience inventory, okay? And when you see that word inventory, that just means there's a bunch of stuff in it. Now, I'm not saying you gotta memorize all this stuff right now, because over time and repetition, uh, I think we're gonna be covering these enough. But when you look at that, military person coming back home, they got these headaches, they got a neurological symptom, they, they served in a combat area, what do you gotta be thinking? Okay, TBI, right? Well, you gotta be thinking you know PTSD and, and trauma and all that stuff, but you better be thinking TBI. Better be on the differential, especially when you have neurological symptoms. So within this, the correct answer is actually gonna be uh, B, C, D, E, and F, okay? Now, if you got that right, man, I'm real impressed. Uh, but typically, uh, again, this is just more of a learning point. Now, the GAD-7, it, it looks for what? It's more of an anxiety, right? Primary care anxiety, not in this situation. WAIS, this is the, uh, I think it's a Weschler, I know it's the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale. And again, it has its place, but not in this setting. So what I do want you to kind of pull away from this is military person, TBI, neurological symptoms, uh, served in combat, the PHQ-9 is going to mainly look at uh, suicide, okay? That's what they're kind of looking at that one for, and this is all coming from the research articles, guys, not making this stuff up. So the PHQ-9, suicide, also, you know, it's a measure of, uh, a measure of depression, but it's going to have that suicide piece, question number nine, uh, on, on that scale. And Davidson Trauma Scale, this one's going to assess for PTSD, okay? The patient health questionnaire really looks at the MDD, uh, depression. The conflict tactics scale, MacArthur Community Violence uh, Interview. Mm, I couldn't really hide that one, but of course that's going to look at violence uh, in the past year. Okay, And then the quality of life uh, index, that's when, that one's going to assess and uh, kind of screen for pain, okay? So within this inventory, when someone comes, military person comes back from combat, keep in mind, PHQ-9, suicide depression, Davidson trauma scale, PTSD, patient health questionnaire, MDD, conflict tactic scale, MacArthur community violence scale, violence in the past year, and the quality of life index is for pain, okay? They're gonna be big. They're, the USM is telling you on that outline that they're gonna be asking more about military people coming back from uh, combat and stuff, and I can see it coming on these exams uh, pretty soon here. So have a familiarity with this military person, neurological symptoms, uh, served in combat, Did, and not necessarily have to had, had to return fire because you can still get TBI from other means as well, but it's gotta be on your differential, okay? So be familiar with that. Now, next question says, uh, the serviceman mentions uh, he was involved in a blast when their convoy was attacked. He mentions he did not lose conscious and can recall all the events around the episode uh, blast of the, bla uh, of the blast episode. He reported feeling confused for several hours after the incident, but that resolved. He mentions that the headaches as 
the only symptom that seems to linger since the episode. Aside from the headache, he is able to, he is able to function uh, with his usual activities of daily living. Okay, so which of the following is the most appropriate diagnosis? Is it A, acute stress disorder? Is it B, post-traumatic stress disorder? Is it C, mild neurocognitive disorder due to traumatic brain injury? Is it D, major neurocognitive disorder due to traumatic brain injury? Is it E, adjustment disorder? Okay, so are there any ones that are just flat out uh, off the table? You know, you always eliminate your worst one or two right out of the gate. Well, you know, I'm not too keen on adjustment disorder because, you know, that's like stressor within, you know, it's within three months. Um, we really never gave a timeline on this, so it's hard to even do that. But it's more of just distress in the work or social situation. But this guy's got neurological symptoms, so it's more than just an emotional reaction uh, to something within three months. So adjustment disorders, I'd say, off the, off the table for right now. Acute stress disorder. You know, it's exposure to death, violence, injury, and or witnessing it. You know, you don't have to actually be there. You could have even wit. You know, I shouldn't say that. You, you do have to kind of uh, exposure to death, injury, violence, or witnessing it. Uh, and, but that's typically, you know, let's say three days to one month. They kind of excluded anything when, it, and I had to correct myself there. They ex they've now excluded like looking at stuff on TV or seeing pictures as as meeting that criteria for, uh, say, PTSD, so keep that in mind. But anyways, acute stress disorder, uh, less than one month, um, and that doesn't excite me for this question so much. So now we're down to PTSD, and then we got this uh, neurocognitive disorders, mild and major, okay? So we know PTSD, that's gonna be our avoidance, you know, hyper arousal, okay, to a situation, uh, persistent anxiety, you know, could have anger outbursts. Um, there's like a threat, you know, a persistent, like a threat of harm. Um, but again, does not include movies, pictures, and things like that. Now, this guy, he has these headaches, and he talks about marital difficulties, but he doesn't give us enough, there's not enough in this question to even make that assumption to meet that criteria for PTSD. So we're going to eliminate that one right now. So now... You know, now we're down to these neurocognitive disorders due to, due to TBI. Because he mentions he had a TBI. And, uh, and according to the, and, and this data, guys, was taken from the Journal of Neuropsychiatry, uh, Clinical Science, 2017. So I'm not just making this up, okay? Uh, so here's what we got. Uh, you know, a TBI, okay? And here's what they say, you know, a TBI, you had to have, you know, per se, impact to head, okay, or other mechanism of, of a rapid movement of the brain uh, within the skull, okay, so TBI, impact to the head, uh, or other mechanism of rapid movement of the brain within the skull, and you got to have with one or more of the following, okay, you got to have, you know, you could have loss of conscious, you could have um, post-traumatic amnesia. You could have confusion. And again, I'm not saying you gotta all have all these. You just gotta have one of these. You gotta have some type of impact to the head uh, or rapid movement of the brain um, within the skull and at least one of the following, loss of conscious, post-traumatic amnesia, confusion, or the last one. Because right now, right, this guy, this guy we talked about didn't have any of these. It didn't have a loss of conscious, he says. It didn't have post-traumatic amnesia. Uh, he, well, he felt confused, but that's all resolved, um, per se. Uh, you got to have neurological symptoms, okay? Now, does he have neurological symptoms? Yes, he's got this headache that, right, just has been lingering and lingering and lingering. So he's got this one, check. He's got the impact of the head because of the blast, per se. And then he's got neurological symptoms, so he meets criteria for traumatic now. What's the difference between mild and major? Okay, you got it. This is a real good take-home point that even applies to other types of questions. Well, for sim simplicity purposes, mild essentially means you're still uh, independent. You know, still independent functioning. You know, you can do the checkbook or whatever, or do your own finances. You know, go to the store, take care of all your your basic needs. For major, I want you to think not independent. You're more relying on other people. 
uh, and there's an, there's really impairment in learning, language, uh, social interactions, and stuff like that. And and I know he's having trouble with his his partner, but there's not enough to support that he's not uh, at the independent level. There's there's a difference there. Okay, that's how I want you to to break those two apart. So he's got the TBI, he's got mild, and is it mild versus major? We're gonna go with the mild on this. And is it arguable? You know, you, anybody can argue anything if they want. But for me in this question, I'm gonna go with mild neurocognitive disorder due to uh, TBI, okay? Understand the TBI, guys. Can't, can't uh, stress, that, stress that enough because that's where the questions uh, seem to be going. Now, this last question says, during the interview, the serviceman mentions that it was during his second deployment that the blast occurred to where uh, he didn't fully, to where he didn't fully recover. So he's saying, look, it was during my second deployment. That's when I started to get after the blast. I got the headache and I didn't fully recover. What would be the most appropriate next question to ask this uh, serviceman? Is it A, what kind of workup, testing, CT, MRI have you had since the injury? Is it B, are you planning to continue with your career or seek medical retirement? Is it C, can you tell me what occurred recently that made you uh, seek help now? Is it D, are you having periods of dissociative symptoms, flashbacks, or hypervigilance? Or is it E, uh, were there any other episodes where you might have had a head injury? Okay, what's the answer to this one? The correct answer is gonna be E, okay? Were there any other episodes where you might have had a head injury? Because in this article, in that, in that journal of Neuro neuropsychiatry 2017, when it talked about uh, military people, TBIs and such, here's just some quick data just to put it in perspective, okay? You have, uh, I'm gonna put normal, that's someone, someone with no history of TBI, single episode TBI, or multiple uh, TBI, okay? And in there, they looked at uh, depression, they looked at suicidal ideations, and PTSD, okay? And say normal, uh, people with no history of uh, TBI, for suicidal ideation, you know, you're in that roughly four, four to five percent. Now, can it fluctuate? Of course, right? You know, when, when times are bad, uh, from a global perspective, maybe it, it perhaps goes up, you know, traumatic events, et cetera, uh, from, a, from a large perspective. So normally, we're looking at that kind of down in that range. Now, for someone who has a single TBI, suicidal ideations, roughly 17%. If you've had multiple TBIs, it jumps all the way up to 31%. So, you know, notice the difference, right? 17 to 31, just based off one TBI versus having multiple and for depression, for a single TBI, roughly inflicts 45%, according to the study. Multiple TBI, it jumps all the way up to 62%. So again, big jump between the two. And for PTSD, we were looking at single TBI at 28% and multiple TBIs at still around that 62% uh, area, okay? So how would you screen for, so what, what do you screen for in this situation for SI? Per se, you're going to use that PHQ-9, right? What about PTSD? That's going to be that uh, Davidson trauma scale. Okay. Repetition, guys. What it's mainly about. Now, what kind of workup? CT, MRI. It's like, yes, could they have had that? Yes, but is it going to make a? Is that your next question? No. Because actually, you know, testing they're going to do it, but it's not like definitive. Meaning hey, we didn't find anything on the MRI, therefore you don't have this. No, that's not the case. Uh, so it's good to have the testing, but it's not indicative to have positive testing to get, a, to get the diagnosis. Are you planning to continue with your career seek medical retirement? And that sometimes comes up, but it's not the question you're going to ask in that situation right there. Can you tell me what occurred that made you see, seek help now? Great question when people come to you as a physician. Um, if some, they had a chronic issue and then now they're coming in, you, oh, I, I always like to ask them this kind of gives you an idea whether it's family pressure or their own they came in but it's not not what you'd ask this guy right now you already know why he's having marital issues uh, are you having periods of dissociative symptoms flashbacks or hypervigilance and again that's just more of that's more of a screening for PTSD uh, but the next question that you're going to ask um, most appropriate I should say and that's usually like a step two kind of thing uh, even though there's a lot of overlap between step one and step two are did you have any other head injuries. It's kind of like asking a person who hurt themselves, do you have any history of self-harm prior to this one? So anyways, guys, make sure you know uh, military people. Uh, I want you to be thinking TBIs, guys. Okay? Hope you liked the video.